So uh, I want to welcome everybody to another uh, year, a time of new beginnings, which are always exciting. Um, and I guess we'll start off with a special welcome to Carolyn Eddy, our new vice principal. I know you were introduced last time, but I'm not sure you were in the hot seat yet, right? Oh, you were right. introduced. Right. You were going to be our vice principal. To the table, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome, and we're Thank you very yes. much. super Thank excited you. to have you. I'm excited. Thanks for being here. Looking forward to a very exciting meeting. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, and then, of course, uh, a big welcome to our new superintendent. Uh, sorry, you may have some temporary title in front of that, but you are our superintendent of schools for this year. That's uh, correct. Okay. Interim is calling it. Interim, excuse me. Okay. Uh, and so, big warm welcome to you, and we're uh, thrilled to have you as well. Thank you. All right. And the rest of you school committee members, good to have you back here. I'll just <laughs> I'll I'll introduce Brian. Oh, Richards. I'm sorry. Yeah. Why don't we introduce him? Yep. Brian Richards is our new part of our business manager duo. Yes, uh, so uh, management solutions uh, company. So we're uh, one itself and, and Mark is here on Thursday, so splitting up stuff and mm -hmm. um, both working on things together. Right. So, so and those are the two that will be with us all, all year then? Correct. Okay. okay, wonderful. Great to have you as well. I know you have a tough job coming in, coping with all those various counts and numbers. We are also thrilled to have you guys. Yep. Um, okay, so quick uh, review and approve the minutes of our last meeting of June 6th. Make a motion to approve June 6th meeting minutes. Second. All right. Any, um, any discussion that is anything? Anybody? No? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So moved. to our uh, financial state. So I guess, Brian, we will turn this over to you and our superintendent to give us a rundown. So the 6.30, uh, we came and then distributed. Uh, it was sent out with the package. And um, that's ongoing, and we're in the process of uh, doing the uh, August, the July, August one now. Um, and the warrants for the time period were $156,290. So any questions come up, I'd um, be glad to field them and uh, we will uh, write them down and get back to you. And if we can't, if we don't know what else to talk for our head, so thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions for Brian? No? Okay, uh, public comment comes up early. Any public comment? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, all right. And so we're going to go into new business. So in here, uh, there's a school committee meeting schedule, which um, I don't know. Are there any changes to when we had this at our last? Absolutely. There are. Okay. So I'll You're sitting in the middle over here. Yeah, that's all right. So <clears throat> as you know, we, we, we've all we, seen this. Though. Right. We, yeah. If you need, if you need a copy, I brought extra copies. Mm -hmm. Oh, cover. I'll take one. You want you can get that thing. You know it's here. It's on there. Right. All right. Nice. I'll take another one. Nice right. colored copy. You can go in there, too. Yeah. 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 They might as well. Uh, we'll I got one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, basically, you know, we talked about, um, or I talked about, we'll say we um, <laughs> talked about um, re trying to reduce the number of night meetings from the overall um, committees, and so um, I met with some of the ch with all the chairs um, and came up with a try it out plan, so to speak. And so for um, September, November. December, May, and June, we're looking at doubling up where we have a 5.30 meeting here, and then I run across the street to Frontier at 6.45. Mm -hmm. And bring people with me, looking at Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you do. Exactly. Um, and um, if you're looking, and within it, you're looking at January, February, and March are the traditional meetings because it's budget season, and that's where meetings will go longer, take yeah. more. Um, more attention, I guess I would say, of the committee and um, public comment and that kind of stuff. Usually we see a spike 
in those months as well. So I was trying to, I mean, this is a work in progress. If this doesn't work, we can come up with something different, but it's, it's yeah. kind of something we kind of went back and forth with, with different ideas. Um, we, we had an 8 a.m. meeting this morning, um, and that kind of made it nice to um, be able to double up nights, with, nights without having that um, fifth, fifth option right. having to go on the night. And that actually worked really well. They're a smaller committee, um, and they, the members of that committee could go during the day. So um, it was actually it was fun in the middle of the committee. We got up and st gave the pledge because it came with an announcement. So, nice. What else are you going to do? Perfect. So um, <clears throat> anyway, so that's the idea. But so because we came up with the change in August, to tonight's meeting, you know, it's, you know, the chair can do that, can change the um, the meeting time. We now would like the, the committee to vote this schedule moving forward, and then obviously if other meetings come up, um, and it's already starting to happen. It's also negotiations here, mm -hmm. um, which we'll talk about later. So there's going to be a lot more meetings coming, but that's just kind of the first first swipe at trying to first idea of trying to do some change and consolidate nights up because yeah. I'd rather do marathon with my family and such, and yeah. be at home on the other end, so. I would make questions? I would make a motion okay. to accept the, the calendar as presented. Okay, second. Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you much. Hope Thank that you the it works out and works yeah. out flexible if uh, yeah, things need to just move around. Cool. Yeah. Summer building maintenance, is that? Okay. So um, this summer we had a fire alarm system update. And the installation is complete, but we're still waiting for uh, schematic and alarm labels to you know exactly which one is going off. We had a door replaced down the fifth grade um, wing in the PE entrance. With some wood chips were delivered and replenished on the playgrounds. Um, we're still in the process with key cards. We had three vendors come in and provide quotes, and we're working uh, with the IT department on a proposal. We're hoping that by the end of September, the restroom partitions and updates will take place across in the cafeteria. Great. And um, carpet replacement is scheduled for winter and February vacations. And I know we talked a bit about uh, looking at the bathrooms throughout the building and, and trying to get that in front of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for 2020. Right. To just kind of get some of those bigger things on, on the calendar. And, yeah, Hopefully the funded. would be a good start. <coughs> I know there is. Floor. Yeah, mm -hmm. tough spot. You know, it's an old building and mm -hmm. the kindergarten wings as well. You yes. know, in those rooms as well. So, wherever we can yeah. do that. So, so we'll Making work to do that. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Thank you. Sounds good. You're welcome. Any questions? Anybody? No? Um, and then some program? Yeah, so we hosted numerous camps and summer programs, and I just want to give a special shout out or recognize Kim McCarthy, Louise Law, and Karen Ferrandino for offering these wonderful opportunities to students and families. We have many, we're a busy place, as you know, in the summer. So we started off with a math mini camp where Kathy Fosno, which is a leading voice in um, math instruction, she led teachers and about 70 students through a three-day math camp. And then we had a two-week pre-K to five reading camp with about 60, 168 students or so that we served. We have um, also hosted the SEAL program. It's a social, emotional, academic. We did special education math, preschool, River Valley Day Camp. Um, we even had strings and band camp happening here. And there was an inventors camp that was well attended by DES students in Waitley too. So, great. Yeah, we were busy. Awesome. Great wow, opportunities. Great learning. That's not busy. That's great. All right, and uh, moving right along to Tina personnel update. Also you. Yeah, so we have a long list. We are busy hiring this summer. Yeah. So, um, you know, we welcome a new classroom teacher, a librarian, a special education teacher, four instructional assistants, a pre-K extended day coordinator, a long-term sub in kindergarten, and of course, our new assistant principal. Mm -hmm. um, we are in, we're in the process of hiring a second shift custodian. So, we should be pretty well staffed by October. Great. Wonderful. Just a quick yeah. on the, was the um, Green Communities Program, had that, was that announced at a previous meeting? I, I don't know if it was. I knew we were trying for it, but All right, so didn't. since yeah, we have a camera on me, I'm yeah. going to give good news here. <laughs> yes. i make it look like I had anything to do with this, which I had not up to this point. Um, but working with the town of Deerfield, we put together an application um, for energy-related projects for the Green um, Communities Program, and we've been a grant, awarded a grant for $106,000. 
Okay. Rounding off the, to, and the town is running the grant. So as soon as we get things kind of lined up, they'll be bidding to replace light fixtures, um, an improvement, um, the boiler, and overall yeah. energy efficiency of the school. That's kind of a huge. That is great. That's great. It kind of came at the beginning of the summer, so that might have been. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Great news. Okay. I can give good news all day. That's all right. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, for anybody who's uh, going to the MASC conference, anybody planning on going? Yeah, I'm going to go this year. Okay. So, um, I guess we need to uh, nominate. Yeah, thank you. Nominate. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. All in favor of Trevor being our official delegate at the MASC conference? Thank you. Okay, so moved. So, do we need to sign anything on there? If we do, we'll do that for you. Okay. Just going to move right down. Okay, yeah, well, tell so. Good enough. Okay. Uh, also, as um, Superintendent mentioned, it's a negotiations year. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, we need to nominate somebody to serve on that uh, committee. Um, I believe I did that last time. I have uh, no. You know, I don't need to do that again, so if somebody else wants to uh, No, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, yeah. I guess I have no sort of ownership yeah, of ownership. it, and if anybody else uh, would like to uh, do that, um, please. Can you know if there's a select board representative to that? There is. There. Okay, it, so that's fine. Well, there's, a, there's a town, there's a town, 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 representative. town representative which has been in the past the select board member, okay. has been the town administrator. Mm -hmm. That is all we're on. Um, I would like to take part, but I don't want to. I'd rather David represent our board if I can come from the town. So, so my recollection is they were town administrators. Mm -hmm. It was a town. The, a, like, I remember the Conway administrator, I remember the Sunderland administrator, I can't remember. I don't remember a Deerfield select person. It was not. I, I, what, um, I if yeah, I'm to go off right. of, I did some quick mm -hmm. study on what we're supposed to do with this, and I was told that I send a letter to each town for them to select somebody to serve. Right. Okay. okay. And so from the town, mm -hmm. and so if, I, if they chose the town administrator versus a select board member, mm -hmm. um, that's up to the town. So it's yeah, up to the town. We were in a transition in the last negotiations. That's why I, I, I was trying to remember because that is also. Uh, Participating in the negotiations in, in the last go around, but mm -hmm. who the heck was it? I can't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so um, we don't necessarily, I guess the question is timing of when you're putting that together, because we could certainly, sorry. So I, I am jumping the gun slightly. We've already, um, <clears throat> the frontier negotiation, which is obviously two separate negotiations. Um, is earlier, the contract says they have to let us know by November 1st and we have to meet within 15 days. So we're getting that kind of all set, that, that prompted mm -hmm. to get this one set. Mm -hmm. um, the union um, 38 doesn't have to let us know into, into January 1st. Okay. So, but we've already, we sent notice out to them, basically reminding them and this, yeah. giving them a template sure. what they're supposed to send us to kind of make the process happen. Okay. I just, there's a lot of reorganizations happening of the five and we said you might as well make the negotiation members while you're dipping up all the other work, so. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, but knowing that, I'm happy to sort of table the, are you, is, there, is the letter going out to the towns sometime relatively? Soon? We haven't formally received the request we have for Frontier. Um, we thought we'd receive it by today, um, yeah. but we didn't, so we're just, so we are kind of getting ahead of it slightly, but we have a joint meeting on next month, and the idea was, as we know, we don't get a lot of business done yeah. on those joint meetings. Yeah. Um, per school. Right, right. Um, so I was trying to get that done ahead of time. But if, mm -hmm. if you have to, I mean, we can, I, I doubt we're going to meet prior to the November meeting if you do want to table it. But um. I'm okay with you. If you'd like to serve again, uh, that's fine. Unless you also can revote, you can appoint one person and change your mind. I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of, uh, I mean, I, <clears throat> I don't want to push it, so. Yeah, you're not pushing me aside, you just want to do it. I, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but <laughs> you guys argue about it. All right, we'll we're going to table this. Let's table this. Okay. We'll see what, what happens with Sounds the town, good. and then we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to put that off. If that's okay with you. That's okay. Okay. Um, okay. So we've got a series of um, revisions to certain policies. So why don't we start with the meal policy, I guess, and then 
not sure who's somebody's handling that. That's me. So um, uh, basically, if you look at the second page, it's a very small um, change yep. in, before the adoption of the official policy. Um, you know, basically getting rid of the graduating seniors may lose the ability to participate in school activities. That was um, that was never really enforced at Frontier, so that's good news. Yeah. Um, but removing that from the thing, and then obviously having a, a, a system for um, parents or guardians who are not able to maintain reasonable accounts, and having a, a, a policy around that. Okay. So um, a lot of these other systems are already in place, so it's just <coughs> getting mm -hmm. a policy. Um, um, getting a policy in, in place that represents what we're doing. You know, we're, we're following the, the laws and the guidelines that basically, you know, you're not singling out students, you're not making sure no one goes hungry, those kind of things, and, and all those things. So, and not penalizing them for extracurricular activities. Correct. Things like that. Correct. So, okay. Okay, so um, I entertain a motion to approve revisions to the uh, EFD, which is the meal charge policy, as submitted. Second. So, oh, I'm so moved. moved. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And moving on to student activity accounts. So again, that's a revision to a point that already um, one that was already in place. And if you go to page two, you can see nice thing in red. <clears throat> Basically, it talks about um, student activity accounts that cease activities for a period of three or more years. Um, this really, um, well, it's you know it's it's a you know cut and paste from the um, from uh, MASC um, suggestion of wording, but this really applies to the, a lot of the accounts at Frontier. We have class accounts; they graduate, they go off. There's money sitting there. Mm -hmm. Frontier was holding on to them for them to come back to their five-year reunion. Sometimes they came back and asked for the money, sometimes they didn't. So the money continued to hold at Frontier. So we were holding money and we really shouldn't have been after three years. So mm -hmm. at the Frontier level, they've been correcting that by reaching out to the, all of a sudden you get a call and say, you know what, you were, you were class treasurer. And most kids are going, I was. <laughs> and so um, there's a sign up, um, you know, we're trying to notify all those, 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 those accounts and get them to either take their money or donate the money back, depending on where they're at and how long, how much, where they're at in their lives and how organized the classes. And some of them use it for their um, reunions and such. Yep. All right. Okay. Motion to approve this presented. All right, second. All in favor? All right, so All right. moved. And moving on to the um, educational opportunities for military children. All right. So that skips one, that's all right, we'll go back to the other one. The, basically, this policy is, is, is aiming after, we don't have a lot of military children, um, but you know those schools that are closer to our uh, military installations, bases, um, a lot of students are transferring from state to state, country to state, you know, that kind of thing, and we're getting very penalized by graduation requirements by those schools or class placement if they arrive middle of the year. Um, and there's a lot of policies in place that say you can't enter certain things at a certain time, those kind of things. This is basically coming in to protect those students um, to not be pun uh, penalized for their, for their parents' service um, and such. Again, it's not, it's not something that you know, we were doing. We weren't penalizing people, but it is one of those things that it is, um, um, it's the law now, so yep. it's one of those policies that admit to fit the law. So, uh, you know, a student comes in in their 11th grade year, they don't have enough to graduate on time, you give them credits for certain things that are close enough, that kind of thing, and try to get them through with their class. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, so make a motion to approve policy JFABE for educational opportunities for military children as presented. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved, and then now onto the uh, educational opportunities for children in foster care. Mm -hmm. Somewhat similar. So again, it, it, it's similar in the sense of um, you know looking to make sure we protect the rights of students and putting in what's best interest for students. So again, this is um, again 
things that we've been following already um, for the most part. But basically, what it's saying in a nutshell is if you know if a child who's enrolled at Deerfield Elementary is suddenly placed into foster care and is put in out of the out of the district, um, they can continue their schooling here. So there's less um, disruption to um, their school lives, and this happens quite a bit. So um, it's one of those things where we have been, um, for the most part, this is what we've been we've been following and working with DCF um, to at least they have some consistency in their lives and that kind of thing. And only when they get moved too far away for reasonable busing do they um, usually change districts, or if the student is having an unpleasant time in the current, they may change. So yeah, um, yeah. Again, it's something that we're already practicing, but now it's something to get firm into policy to make sure that we do what's best. So make a motion to accept uh, policy JFADF, Educational Opportunities for Children in Foster Care, is presented. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you Thank very you much. I think that, that deals with our revisions and new policies. Um, so we have. Um, moving right along to reports. I have no report. Uh, collaborative have a report? No report. Yes, no. Yeah. Have a, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So back to you, Tina. Hi. Principal's yeah. report. We're off to a smooth start this year. Um, our theme continues to be teamwork, and teamwork involves clear communication and active participation in uniforms. So we started off the year with wearing, everybody wore the same t-shirts, and we greeted returning families and new families as a team. So everybody from custodians to crossing guards, I think the fabric could have used a better choice. It was very <laughs> hot. Like, hot day. Yeah. Hot we start our school year, you know, uh, maybe a little humid and hot. Yeah. So yeah, next year a darker color and wish are waking fabric. But, <laughs> no, that was fun to start that way. Um, okay. We're already uh, starting our professional development. We have Polly Bab coming in for the Union 38 Elementary Schools. Uh, for you that don't, for those of you that don't know her, she's a New England-based expert in behavior, and she's going to be helping right. us with our Tier One and Two interventions. Okay. We have a school-based leadership team that we, um, following the school improvement plan, did some surveying of staff um, to see what what they were interested in. So this year we're working on Tier Three instruction around executive functioning. So that melts nicely with the um, district plan. Mm -hmm. We also knew this year having instructional leadership teams will have an upper and a lower team, and teams will meet three times a year looking at data um, and to drive instruction. Our first meeting will happen after our fall testing, which is taking place right now. Believe it or not, students come in and we test them. Yeah. <laughs> Great. That's how we like to start it off. We're tag teaming this year too, so, so, so we a little news anchory. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so last year we had our reunification training with just yep. staff. Uh, during October this year, we're going to kind of up it and have the staff volunteer their kids to join along so we can get some kid Great. activity in it and practice uh, the training at that point. I'm very happy. Then, of course, today the fifth grade headed off to Nature's Classroom. We have a Nature's Classroom okay. mom and our yes. Wow. So they set off this morning and they're returning again on Friday. We had a total of 57 fifth graders mm. heading out to Coldwood, Connecticut for Great. an exciting Nature's Classroom week. Time. And they arrived. They did. Yeah. 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 Last year, I don't know if you remember, the, the bus, bus uh, yeah. went down. Yes. So this year, it's a little late this year. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Um, so for family communication, um, we've updated, I'm skipping ahead, I can skip to yours, sorry about that. Um, we've updated the website to include a live binder for the student um, handbook, and this just provides a user-friendly format, so that's on the website. Do you want to take the different one? Go ahead, you can do that one. School so Council? Sure. So School Council is going to be on October 3rd from 6 to 7. There's going to be an election this year for parent representatives. And the BTA is going to organize a vote now, so as there is more interest in space. Yeah. Yeah. The voting should be happening in the next couple of um, days. I think there's five interested parents this year, right. so we have three spots. Perfect. Yeah. Um, Coffee Connection will continue again this year. That's a time where we open our doors to families and um, community members. This year, we're going to offer a series of short informational sessions around executive functioning, kind of to mirror the professional development that teachers are getting, so there's that homeschool component. Um, so we're in that first one is going to happen on September 25th. Yep. Um, classroom, and classroom news. Yep. So classroom news. So the first grade 
Mom's report that they got off to a fun start. They're playing games, and this year they're going to do an all about me book that they helped her present during curriculum night. I think that's what they've done in the past. Yeah. Second grade, of course, the same thing. It's off to a great start. They're working together, hoping for a successful school community. Fifth grade, like we said, is off to Nature's Classroom. They had a lot of volunteer chaperones that went in classes. You know, they're going to mess with fifth grade. A little bit quieter down that way. <laughs> And then sixth grade, this, uh, they're starting off with learning about music history, and they're going to look at the medieval period and kind of link it all together with modern music trends and the historic group of that. We're hitting the ground run. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. And the superintendent's report. <coughs> Basically, you know, you can you know, look at the hand that I've given you. The, you know, we had a, a smooth opening of all five schools. Um, I, I just put an introduction of the administrators, um, including the new business managers on there. If you're yes. looking for spelling of Mark's last name, that's usually where people get hung up. Brian Richards is pretty easy. Um, and obviously, um, Christina Curtin is the new principal of or at Wheatley, and George Landis is um, the interim principal at Frontier Regional. Um, I am creating an entry plan. Um, I did join the, um, the induction program for superintendent. Um, even though I'm an intern for one year, they, they allowed me to enter, Great. and I thought it was a good idea just to, yeah. I'm not continuing on, at least I'll have the skills some other time. Um, and I'm also, you know, building an entry plan goals with, the, with that in mind. I'm not trying to overstep and be presumptuous of one thing or another, but also working with the administrative team so that we're moving forward. Um, this year. Um, as we already talked about, the conference is happening in Hyannis, so I'll be attending, so. Um, um, we are, um, we have a, a software update, as you probably heard last year, we were, we were rolling out the Infinite Vision software, which basically is our budget management software, um, starting with the central office and now with the principals, and we just even had a training last week. Um, it is a learning curve, but it is giving us a more live, um, live data on where our budget stands from day to day, where before we had to wait to see what okay. was encumbered, and, 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 and just the moving of those numbers um, from book to computer. Um, now <coughs> a, a principal can sit at their desk and see um, where things are pretty much at. Yeah. And so, um, but there's still a learning curve of how it, different levels of approval to make sure there's counter, there's um, balance within um, and accountability within the purchasing of things. So we're, we're working through that, um, plus we have two new users coming on, so, um, it is a learning curve, but we're, we're getting there. Um, I had an IT update. I just thought this was interesting. Um, I asked Scott Paul, who you should all know, um, who's just a, a, a fabulous IT director, yes. just kind of give us a rundown of what you know what happened this summer as part of the summer report. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but I thought it was good to give everybody what's happened through the whole district because it's kind of interesting to see what other schools are needing to get done. Yeah. You know, where um, Deerfield falls in the sense of, um, you can say, oh, we did that a couple years ago, or, oh, we should be moving toward that. And just overall, the scope of the many projects um, they're working on this. A lot of times we don't think about um, the behind the scenes work with technology. We only just think about purchasing new computers and that kind of thing, and not just the um, keeping everything up to date and all the different software and all the other places that um, technology kind of enters our lives at school. Um, and then the last thing is the uh, the next, the newest thing I, I'm taking on right now um, is the file storage. And I'm just kind of bringing that up to each committee. Um, as you know, with this, the, the Frontier Committee is working with this, the sale of Christian Lane, the old central office, and it's pretty um, close to being finalized there. In there is all the files of every school. And there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And there's um, there's talk, uh, you know, we put some money aside to start to move toward digitizing them. Um, and I have a meeting later this week with uh, one vendor to talk about the proposal of digitizing, what's that look to organizing. And it is a very expensive, very time consuming. And then in the end, there are some things you can't digitize. So I'm, gonna, I'm getting the data on that, but it is a massive 
there is a massive amount of files there. When I walked through, I was kind of in shock that it's literally a tractor trailer truck load of files that somehow we have to do something with. Um, and we are starting to process them. On Monday, we had a truck come and it, it shredded three tons to add to the other 10 tons that had already been shredded. So you're talking about, I mean, everything was put into boxes and kept over the years because they had the storage space to do it. I'm not going to blame any previous administration or my current staff or, you know, and then you wrote, you're supposed to rotate out, those are supposed to be shredded, but if you didn't have to, right. you didn't. And so, and then there was confusion on what can be shredded and what can't be shredded. And so we're bringing in these outside consultants to vendors who are also teaching us, I'm not calling them consultants, um, and, and telling us where we're at. So Patty had taken this on and started moving the, um, the cart forward on this. Unfortunately, with me taking over, I'm taking two steps back to figure out where Patty was to, so I understand each of the decision making moving forward. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at there. I'm just kind of saying that because one of the statements was made by some member that we'll just send all the files back to the towns because I have all of Deerfield in a section. And so yep. there's maybe eight, four, there's probably eight, four tiered file cabinets full of records that you have to hold all employment records forever. You have to hold um, student records, um, at least some sort of record of their being forever. There's certain things to be weeded out. And so some of those haven't been weeded. So there's a lot of it. But right now, I don't want to be dividing up the records because requests come to the central office. They should be kept in one place. And we start going four different or five different places yeah. with records. You've got to make sure that they're treated properly. So it is a very expensive, big, hands-on problem that and I probably have about a year to correct it because of the sale mm. and intention that we get the records out as well. So and towns share the same problem. Uh, yeah. We just didn't have We've been working with King Systems to right. That's fine, yeah. work through some of that too, but yeah, there does need to be a solution. <laughs> there does, and there does need to be some, some level of storage. Absolutely. And so it, it can't be all put onto a, because there's certain things you can copy, there's certain things that have to be microfiche, remember that? Yeah. Um, they still don't allow full digitization of files because people can tamper with them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know why someone wants to tamper with the 1985 payroll, but you could. <laughs> <coughs> or 1955 right. payroll. Right. And we have it all. Is, right. is, that, is, is that building um, under contract for sale? Yes. So, what's the timeline on that? It weighs off though, you said a year? So they allowed us to keep storage in there for one year. Okay. And so, however, um, how much of that, they want to begin work at some portion of it too. So they asked us to move it to one room and I went over and that may not be feasible. Right. And so um, maybe two rooms, right now it's spread across four or five rooms. And I'll be, we're not packing each room there. They've used each room to organize each type of file mm -hmm. to bring some organization since they have the space to do it. So we're working with um, the purchaser on that as well. So, okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Any questions Thank you very much. for the superintendent? Anybody? No? Yeah? Okay. Good. Thank you. And uh, I guess uh, mm. motion to adjourn. We'll adjourn at, uh, it is 6 7, 6 7.